All summer, we hope. How's the fishing? Well, I hate to boast about our country. Go ahead. It'll seem like home. We're from California. <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> well, it just happens that I love boasting. See that truck? They do. Do you mind if this gentleman has a look? Not a bit. They're in the back. I didn't bring money this time. Rainbow trout. Frozen in ice. I guess that the lodge shipped them to friends in the States. There's no duty on the American side. How far is the lodge? Oh, about 100 miles north. Have a trout? No, oh, thanks. I'll catch my own. <laughs> I'll catch that one right now, Duke, in case you feel like passing it over. You know you're going to turn into a trout someday. <laughs> thanks. getting so easy, I'm ashamed to draw my salary. <laughs> Which what time? That one marked Riviera Club. Nice idea, eh? Carrying hot money on ice. Yeah? Where do you expect us to pass this kind of money? You're doing all right. Kyle C4A37, counterfeiters. Bronson Nolan Carroll. Charles Nolan, alias Dreamy Nolan, a clever passer. Angel Carroll, a killer with a dangerous criminal record. James Bronson and Graver served five years, violated parole by... Constable Jameson, have these placed aboard a plane and flown to Harper. And uh, Constable McDonald. Yes, Inspector. Motorbikes. Confounded contraptions. This looks like quite a case, Mac. I know my boy Tommy is going to be thrilled when I tell him that we're working with the G-men. By the way, Renfrew's due back in a couple of days. You might pass him on your way north. Well, if I miss him, you can be sure he'll show up for the picnic. I hear that he's making a special meat sauce for the barbecue. Barbecue sauce. I wish that young man would make up his mind to either be a great chef or a grand opera warbler or just a plain sergeant of the mountain. Still, he manages to do pretty well for the department. That's what puzzles me. How a man can fool away his time in so many different things and still make a record for arrest. Yeah, but you can't figure out that fellow. Oh, uh, take these and uh, put them through your district, Mac. Yes, sir. Anything else? That's all. Good luck.
to be good. That famous cook from the lodge is coming a hundred miles to beat run through. Oh, really can beat anybody at anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you mightn't get here. Oh, we couldn't miss. We were smelling that venison for miles. Hello, Rennie. Ah, uh, hello, Tommy. Quite an honor to be noticed by a G-man. Smell this. Whoo! What's that? That's to go in the hotel cook sauce. <laughs> Why, Tommy, that wouldn't be sporting. See, you'll never grow up to be a Mountie. I don't want to be a Monty. I want to be a G-Man. Well, I think I'll go over there and cook up some of that sauce. Oh, by the way, where's my opponent in this sauce-making contest? Best sauce-maker in the world. So it is you who is a bad gig of me, huh? <laughs> my friends are ready to police. <laughs> Hello, George. Hello, George. How are you? So you realize me, huh? The most best sauce maker in the world. Ah, my friend Rene, I am so sorry for you. Look, right now I allow you to be pulled from the contest. Oh, not without tossing a few pickles and chutney around here. Pickles? Chutney? <laughs> I come a hundred miles in the lodge and you pickles. Chutney. Look, here. I have a new important rod. Important from England. One hundred bucks. A hardy. I envy you. I show you how it works. It works uh, uh, just like my sauce. It's got the, what do you call, uh, oomph. Look, look. Uh, here. Now don't do that, George. You're liable to catch somebody. Here, I'll show you. Oh, this is a beauty, George. I beg your pardon. <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. You get your 120 pounds in the first time. <laughs> Here, hold it, sir. You uniform peanut. What do you think you're trying to do? I beg your pardon. I was just showing my friend how to fit. I always imagine people did that in oceans or rivers or lakes or well, it was some kind of water. Let me apologize and invite you to our picnic. Sorry. I'm waiting for someone. We're starting north. Well, invite him, too. Your husband? My father. Well, splendid. What splendid? Oh, I mean, I get along much better with fathers than with uh, husbands. Hey, Rennie. Come on, they want you to make the sauce. Right you are, son. Your, uh, your little boy. Hey, when do we... Ah, come on, when do we... Quiet, quiet, please! 
quiet, please. <laughs> it is an art to mix this sauce. This recipe I got from the king of my country. Yes, and I got mine from Barbecue Bill just before he died. Oh, that's too bad. From indigestion. <laughs> Barbecue Bill was a mountie, and all oh, that man could eat. He rode to this land of bounty, was always in search of me. A half-breed squaw once fed him soft, for this recipe he stole his horse. When Barbecue Bill left the mountie, he handed it down to me. A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old shoe, a part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill, said old Barbecue Bill. A little of that. A piece of old shoe. A part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill. Said old barbecue bill. He knew how to make a chop suey. That really was hard to beat. And though it was messy and gooey, for mounties it was a treat. You gulped it down and held your nose. But how it stayed down there, goodness knows. When barbecue bill with the mounties, he gave me the recipe. A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old show, a part of a hat. Mix a little of fish with your fill, said old barbecue bill. A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old show, a part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill, said old barbecue country, Canada. You get used to it. I was lucky in getting the job of drawing the advertising folder for the lodge. Do you think they'll like my first sketch? I wouldn't know, pal. Well, here we are. Pretty swell place, eh? All our guests are in the social register. Everything's deluxe. Yes, sir. Lovely day, isn't it? Have you are Miss Virginia Bronson registered here? She's my daughter. She hasn't arrived yet, Bronson. Uh, but there's someone waiting to see you right there in the office. Five years indoors. I didn't know that you were connected with this place, Angel. I thought you were supposed to do a little drawing. That's what I was told. But I guess. Don't go running away. The head man told me to meet you. I should have known there'd be a trick to an offer like this. Of course, you're the manager. <laughs> no, I wish I was. I only work here. I told him about you, and he said he was willing to give you a chance. You better look your quarters over before you say anything. They're in the next building. Duke here will take you over, and I'll be over in a minute. And uh, here's where our guests have their trap frozen for shipping. All right, I'll take them from here, Duke. Okay. Come on, Watson. You see, this is what we sort of use for a shipping room. Over here is the office that you're going to work in. Step right in. Meet another old friend. You remember Nolan, don't you? Dreamy always said you were a great artist. Hello, Nolan. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bronson. What did I tell you? I dream about Michelangelo, the great artist. And what do we get? A great artist. Tell me there's nothing in dreams. Are we glad to see you? Look at what we were calling an engraving. 
I don't want to look at it. It's no use, Carol. Why do you think we sent for you? We're unloading the last batch by canoe. I figure you can seize up in no time at all. See, our last artist wasn't so hot. Where is he now? He got the shooting over his mouth. We had to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah, I left. He went away. And that's just what I'm doing. I'm meeting my daughter and leaving here right away. Wait a minute. Your daughter isn't coming here. What have you done with her? No, she's all right. We just sent her a message to sidetrack her until we could talk to you. We'll send for her if everything's okay. I see. And when she gets here expecting me to start a new life, she'll find me back at this. That's the way to talk. I knew you wouldn't pass up a chance to land on your feet again. Take it easy. We'll have your daughter here in a couple of days. Just relax. I said take it easy. Wait a minute. Don't do that. Do what? Are you dreaming again? He won't make any trouble. Will you, Mr. Bronson? That's it. Relax. When you deliver that goldfish, take this to the girl. It's from her father. Then take the south fork and come through the lake. And be sure nobody's following you. She booty girl. What's that to you? men by the finding of a counterfeit banknote under the body that the constable was killed by a member of the ring we are seeking it may be one of these three men whose pictures you have and it may be some of our own countrymen aiding them at any rate we stand challenged by a dangerous gang who have adopted methods very rare in the dominion it must be your resolve to meet this challenge with every resource at your command to leave no task unfinished, no trail unfollowed, to avenge the death of Constable McDonald. My daddy! 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 Steady, boy. Take it easy, partner. Steady, old fella.
my daddy used to sing me that. I know, Tommy. When I grow up, I want to be just like him. We mustn't let anyone know what happened until the force gets a chance to work. Well, I have to leave now. Good night, Tommy. Good night. Your father, he sent this. He say meet him there. Told him for a But did he get the job? He say not talk. What's the matter? Is there anything wrong? He say not talk. He's still following us, huh? I think so. Yes, I just caught sight of him again. All day he trailed us. That's bad. Well, what's the difference? My father and I haven't done anything wrong. We're not afraid of the police. This time he no bother us. Stop that! Put that gun down! I didn't have time to say hello before. Nice day. It's a bit damp, don't you think? Well, now that you mention it, perhaps we better have a fire. Thanks for everything. Who is it? Uh, outdoor service. Anything for the dry cleaner today, ma'am? Oh, yes, just a minute. Come round to the back door. without me. Lucky thing for you, I happened along. Yes, wasn't it? Uh, how did it happen? I told you before, the canoe tipped over. Who tipped over? 
I've got to have more information before I can make out my report. I think you said your name was, uh, Bronson? Virginia Bronson, private secretary. Sounds like a sensible name. Girl your age should know better than to stand up in a canoe. By the way, uh, what is your age? Well, I was changing places with the guy. Refuses to seat age. 19 going on 20. Now, let's split the difference and uh, make it 21. Ripe old age. Wonder you ever reached it when you hire such a guide. Why? Well, you told him to take you north, and he was going the other way. Well, then he won't be much lost. Uh, where were you going to join your father? Why, right, Harper. I see. Now, there's a few more questions, but I think I can answer them. Uh, color of hair, brown. Color of eyes, blue. Weight. Weight about 140. 110 and not another ounce. I ought to know. I had to carry you. But my clothes were wringing wet. Water weighs a lot. If they were made out of blotting paper. I don't think I could allow you more than four ounces. Ooh. Say, aren't you going to eat any more? Uh-uh. If I did, I would weigh 140 pounds. Oh, boy, I wish George were here to listen to that compliment. You know, one of these days, I'm going up to the Totem Pole Lodge, and I'm really going to show him how to cook. Did you say Totem Pole Lodge? Yes, that's his stamp ground. Ah, oh, great fella, George. Barrel of fun. Well, I'd better get down here and get some water so we can clean up these dishes. I guess that's just uh, she wolf. I imagine she's trying to be one of Lightning's lady friends. Oh, but he's much too loyal to be lured away. Hey, come back here, Lightning. Lightning knows that one. She's always trying to lure him away from duty. Yeah, but he's a good policeman. Doesn't let a thing like that interfere. Right. City. I don't blame you for being nervous. I feel the same way in the city. Wonderful place here, Echo Glen. Did you ever hear it? No. Then listen. Hello! Hello! Do it again. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Again. Would you even doubt an echo? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, nothing. The Indians think a great spirit lives here. The dead souls answer from beyond. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. Hello, great spirit. Can you hear me? <laughs> Double cross. <laughs> Say, are all mounted men like you? I mean, I always imagined they were grim fellows, always following their line of duty, kind of to arrest their own grandmother. Oh, you've been reading books. And not more than a dozen or so mounted men arrest their own grandmother last year. Well, how nice of them. Matter of fact, I suppose we're just ordinary fellows doing our job. Like being a private secretary. Only our job takes us away from places where we hear radios and sets us down where nature does its own broadcasting. Mind if I turn in? I'm tired. I don't seem to be able to keep this up like you. I'm sorry. You have such a big trip ahead to reach Harper. I think you said Harper. Yes. Good night. Good night.
want them to get away. Delhi is the place we're hunting for. You can never tell about women, Lightning. Save their life and they steal your horses. ran off a batch of the first plate. Why, well, they're bankers special. I dreamed last night they turned the mint over to us. Shut up. You finish up that $10 plate and you'll be on Easy Street. Why should I believe you? You've been holding me a prisoner here. Why hasn't my daughter arrived? Oh, she'll be here. The boss said so. I don't believe you. Who is he? Why haven't I seen him? Oh, All right, right. Oh, you fool. You're crazy enough to ruin everything. One more crack out of you and I'll let you have it. Hey, what's going on here? Tell him. What are you having, a rascal of matches? Maybe I buy a ticket, huh? This guy Bronson's gone nuts. Who's the nuts? Is that the way to talk to an artist? How do you do? I'm a pleased to meeting you. You are George Polis, I suppose. After you eat my poor bay, you suppose I'm Polis? <laughs> my friend, I am a Polis. We are great artists. Here, sit down. Sit down before you fly off the hands. When I go to make money, like uh, Uncle Sam's, I get the best. For the best passer, I got Nolan. For the best bumper offer, I got Carol. And for the best engraver, I got you. I'm quitting. My, my nerves are all unstrung. I wouldn't be of any use to you anyway. Well, what do you talk is a nonsense. Perhaps you can tell me when I may see my daughter. What is that Indian fellow? I saw him down at the barbecue. Oh, maybe he get delayed because he knifed at Constable McDonald, huh? That's bad killing mounted men. Oh, they don't suspect us. I am a good friend with the police. I mean, it's bad for us. He might get hard to handle. I guess a good number one bumper offer can handle him. Now, don't you what? I send a couple of men after this Indian guide, and I have your daughter here in one shook of a lamb steak. I told you before you couldn't get away with it, and I meant it. But no, you had ideas. You wanted to be the big shot. You double-crossed me, eh? You'd wait till we had the dough, then you'd go howling to the law. All right, I'll show you what we do with double-crossers. I'll give you something you won't forget, just like Kelly got. <laughs> and that, little boys and little girls, concludes the seventh chapter of our thrilling mystery serial. Constable Holly, sir. Sergeant Renfrew, Constable. At ease. That radio kind of fooled me. Nothing like a bit of wireless for excitement, eh? It's the only excitement that ever happens around this station. Uh, was there something you wanted, sir? You didn't by any chance see anything of an Indian and a white girl passing through, did you? No, sir. Were you following them? Since last night. Seems longer. Could I get you a spot of tea? Woman who cooks for me lives just down the street. Won't take a minute. Thanks. I could stand a bite. I'll take over your post. No need, sir. Nothing ever happens here. Where you been? On a sightseeing trip? Mounty follow us. Take new trail. No catch me. This is horse. Yeah? What's his name? I don't know. I just say giddy up. War. Wise guy. You got any idea, sister? Yes, his name is Sergeant Renfrew. Renfrew. Thanks. I'd like to make a report that my car was stolen down at the village. But I guess you're not the regular constable. No, but I'll take the report. I'm Sergeant Renfrew.
Hey, what's been going on here? Put it right down there, Constable, and take a look at this. I say, what's this all about? New counterfeit. The ink isn't even dry. Charge them with possession and disturbing the peace. You'll find something in the rule book. Have you a magnifying glass? Magnifying glass? Oh, sorry, I lent it to the Boy Scout troop to start fires in the forest, or whatever they do. Now then, what's your name? I'm afraid we can't help you, pal. You mean you don't know your own identity? Yeah. There's lots of days you feel you're not yourself. American humor, eh? Well, I'll guarantee you won't feel yourself for years. I say, what's that you're looking through? Homemade magnifier. Paper clip, loop one end, and drop of water. Forms a perfect lens. Law of nature. That's how Spallanzi discovered the microscope. Constable, have you a plane here in the station? No, sir. Then I'll telephone one from headquarters. Station 57, please. Station 57.
I assure you, my dear, everything is all right. I merely have to work away from the hotel, sketching. But there's nothing to worry about. Oh, but there's another thing that puzzles me. Well, this man, for instance, who is he? I'm just a friend. I work with your father. If you don't mind, I'd rather speak to my father alone. Why, sure. That is, if Mr. Bronson doesn't need me. No, Mr. Carroll, it will not be necessary. All right. Dad, you're not telling the truth. Why do you say that? Because ever since I left Deer River, a mounted policeman's been following me to arrest you. He couldn't be after me. It's only your imagination. Well, he had a picture of you. Luckily, we flew off the track. His name is Sergeant Renfrew. Sergeant Renfrew? Oh, I know. He's been following you, hasn't he? Yes. Do you know why? No, I don't. He's after your father, so you better be careful. Your father's in uh, business again. Better watch your step with Renfrew. That's all. Press. Now, don't you worry. You just finish those ten books and play the special. And then I'm a leave? Why, sure. Sure. Don't I tell you personal? My word is always a first class. What do you think? Perfect. The best plate I ever see. When we get the stuff off to the other place, we don't have to worry about nothing. Still something to worry about. What do you think? Uh, you know what I always think about those things. The guy didn't want to come here to begin with. All right, what is the first thing he's going to do? Try to cover himself up. That is, if you let him. I don't think we let him. Okay. Hey, Dreamy. Dreamy. Where'd that guy go? That's what I'd like to know. Virginia. I told her what happened, Mr. Bronson. You'd better not lose any time. Funny, I thought I saw him headed this way. Wait a minute, Dreamy. What did I tell you? Just saw you with that Bronson girl. What were you talking about? Nothing. I... I was just saying hello. Yeah? Where'd she go? I don't know. I tell you, I, I was just saying hello. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe you was just to saying a goodbye. I thought I told you to keep on the cover. The plate's finished. You promised me I could go with him. Why, sure. But first we take a look and see if maybe those plates are okay. Next time you're liable to get yourself in trouble. Well, I, I was going crazy all these killings. Ah, oh, forget about it. Hey, no. Well, what I wanted to say to you is this. Next time that you do it. Station 59, headquarters. Station 59, headquarters. Headquarters? Inspector Newcomb, please. Inspector Newcomb? Hey, Benny! Oh, hello, Chief.
George. You all right, Rennie? Oh, oh, I'm all right. Oh, Rennie, lots of trouble today. Somebody shoot at Indian guide, too. Indian guide, eh? Sure. Come on, I'll show you where he is. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? That's where they keep the frozen the fishes. What's over there? Oh, that's where I make the ice. Maybe somebody there, huh? Come on, we go take a look. All right, Bronson, come with me. Don't bother to turn around, Rennie. Think I ought to put my hands up, George? Yeah, I think that would be more better. Get trouble. Feel nervous? Think you need any help? Crazy guy. What are you going to poke your nose into my business for? Oh, I forgot to tell you, George. You're under arrest, and anything you say may be used against you. Anything I say now is okay. But still, I don't figure how you know that Indian, he killed that constable McDonald. I didn't until now. Thanks, George. You don't have to worry about him. We kill him for you. And anybody else who gets in our way. It's too bad. Yes, it is. And I feel sorry for you. The Mounties will be here any minute. You got a message, you don't get through. Wires were cut. That's a so bad. Oh, you double across you! You're making me think you got enough bullets in that gun. That's an old trick, George, and I'm surprised you ever fell for it. Yeah, but you'll never be able to use it. You're very particular about giving prisoners guns. Yeah, but they certainly ought to appreciate your cooking. Okay. Got my note. Note? No. But I read the message on the counterfeit bill through your magnifier. Here, take this man. Come with me, Jim. when he engraved the message on the counterfeit bill.